Hi, everyone. I'm Ben Tracy. And I'm Lilia Luciano. Classes were held virtually today at Columbia University because of safety concerns over the protests against the Israeli war in Gaza. Students and demonstrators have flooded areas on and around campus for a sixth straight day in protest of Israel's operations in Gaza. Now, the rise in anti-Semitic rhetoric is causing safety concerns on campus and across the city. One of the university's prominent rabbis urged students to go home as a precautionary measure. And with Passover set to begin at sundown, the NYPD is ramping up its presence near campus and around the city. New York City Mayor Eric Adams is with us for more on the city's response, the rise in anti-Semitism and these ongoing protests. So, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to get your thoughts on what's unfolding up at Columbia. I think you have posted that you're disgusted by it. I'm also curious as your, to your take on the school's response to these protests over the last six days. And I want to be clear, uh, the right to protest is a part of the American uh, way of life. And I protested as a young man during uh, the South Africa calling for the dismantle of uh, apartheid. So I know what it is to protest. Uh, but if you look at those protests, you will see that there was no call spewing out uh, the destruction of any particular group. Uh, there was no calls for violence. There was no celebrating. Uh, terrorist organizations like Hamas. Uh, that is what is bringing about a level of concern that you are wit witnessing. And we're hoping that not only uh, Columbia University, but we will be holding a meeting with all of our colleges uh, to really explain how to engage the New York City Police Department to ensure that there's no violation of laws or no violation on private property. Uh, Mayor, I was there covering the protests on the second day uh, when they began, and I noticed at first that there was an overwhelming presence of, N presence of NYPD, and that made sense because immediately the crowd got larger and larger. However, um, and, and sure, at some points, things felt like they escalated, um, but it, it was always safe when I was there. I'm curious. Columbia University is a private institution. Uh, they, it's private property. I understand that the city can only uh, be there given some certain circumstances. A, is there a credible threat at this point at the campus? And B, how, do you, how does the city manage? Right. And I think that's an excellent question. That's an excellent point because New York is in their frustration. Uh, they will call for the police department to do more. But we cannot enforce the law by breaking the law. Uh, we all know um, how this country holds dear the right uh, to voice one's opinion. But that voicing of opinion, I don't believe personally, should call out the level of hate that we're seeing and the level of uh, threats that we're seeing. Uh, but at the same time, if there's imminent threat on any college campus, uh, private or not, we're going to respond. But other than that, a private college campus, we must be invited in by the authorities of that campus or their school to come inside, like we were, uh, what we saw last week when the police department went in to dismantle uh, the encampment because they were asked and permitted to come on the grounds. But to be clear, there's no credible threat at this point? Not at this time. Uh, we uh, monitor all of the social media and no all of the normal uh, methodologies that we use to determine if there's a credible threat. And at this time, there is no credible th threat. This uh, rise in anti-Semitism is not taking place just on the campus of Columbia. Uh, what, what sort of steps is New York taking to protect Jewish residents across the city, especially now during Passover? Of, of, you know, whenever you see an increase like we witnessed uh, post-October 7th, uh, we're on high alert. We look at some of the soft targets, some of the synagogues, uh, some of the large uh, populations where we have Jewish residents, and we make sure that we put in place uh, our procedures during Passover that we do traditionally uh, during uh, these high holy days. We do the same around Easter for a uh, Christian institution. We do the same around Ramadan for Muslims inst institution. There's no place for hate in the city. And we have a police department uh, that managed over 500 protests uh, dealing with the conflict in the Middle East. And you're seeing that you don't see a large destruction of property. You don't see a large level of people being uh, assaulted because the NYPD is the best at doing this job. Mayor, I want to shift gears a little bit because there is a, a 
big issue that the city has been dealing with for a long time. You have been very critical of the Biden administration's immigration policies. And I'd like to ask you, I've been covering immigration in the city and across and beyond the border. One thing that I've noticed while living here in New York is that once uh, temporary protected status was passed for Venezuelan migrants, I've noticed uh, that the shelters and the people were the places where people gather, there's fewer Venezuelans. You've always talked about the federal government and what the Biden administration can do to help. And I'm curious, A, is there a policy that needs to be implemented right away from the federal government that can support your efforts here in the city? And B, is the city helping people get jobs? Uh, uh, there is something we could do. There are long-term, uh, short-term, and mid-term, I like to say. And there's, ha, there has really been an abandonment, particularly by the Republican Party, of implementing real immigration reform. But we should be extending temporary protective status, TPS, and allowing work authorization uh, for everyone we parole into the country that's a migrant or asylum seekers. Many people think they're here illegally. No, they're not. They were paroling legally by the national government. This is a national problem. It should not fall on the backs of Chicago, New York, Denver, Los Angeles. Of uh, Cities should not have to address national problems. And, and that is, is what we could do. And then we need a, re a real decompression strategy at the border. That's important. And does the city have uh, a program that help pe helps people connect with the jobs that are in high demand? Uh, yes, we do. And uh, I really have to take my hat off to our private industry. Uh, they have stepped up and they are calling for uh, work authorizations. And we are doing a series of things with private nonprofits and others to train individuals on different levels with the construction industry uh, booming. There's some real opportunities here. That's the real irony of it is that we need workers in all areas. I need everything from lifeguards to food service workers to uh, backstretch workers to the farm industry. Yet we have able men and women that are sitting around all day doing nothing when they could be filling the responsibilities we have for employees. And to be clear, why are they sitting around? What are they waiting for? Well, believe it or not, I can't even allow of uh, migrants and asylum seekers to volunteer and give them a stipend for doing some of the basic services we need in the city. The national government does not allow me to give them work in the city without having work authorization. We were able to get a TPS status uh, for um, Venezuelans. It was extended, but we needed for all the migrants and asylum seekers that we're seeing coming to New York. Thank you so much uh, for your time. I don't know. I've uh, Ben wanted to, to ask you, a, you a couple more questions if we had time, but I <laughs> wanted to get that clear because I think it's such an urgent thing here and in other cities. Yeah, we appreciate your time. Thank you. New York Thank City you. Mayor Eric Adams. Thank you.